Hello and welcome to what, why and how. In this video, let us talk about probability spaces and their characteristics. The probability space of any random experiment can be characterized by three features. One, what are the possible outcomes of that particular random experiment? Two, what are the different events that can be observed and measured during that random experiment? And three, how do we measure the probability of these events that we observe during the random experiment. So the probability space is defined by these three characteristics. The outcomes omega, the set of all measurable events, which is called also called sigma algebra, and the probability measure p. Now let us try to understand these three using the example of a coin toss exam experiment. Assume that you are performing an experiment by, toying co by tossing a coin twice sequentially. Now, what are the possible outcomes of such an experiment? You can either get a head and head in the two sequential coin tosses or head and a tail or a tail and a head or a tail and a tail. So you have four possible outcomes of this particular coin toss experiment. Now, how do you define an event? And event A is nothing but a subset of this particular set of outcomes. For example, if you define an event as the two coin tosses giving out the same outcome, that is head head or tail tail. This particular set is a specific event and this as you can see is a subset of omega. Another example of event is the two coin tosses giving different outcomes, say HT or TH. This again is a subset of omega. We can define a power set P of omega as the set of all possible events that are outcome of this particular random experiment. Power set is nothing but a set of all possible subsets of this set omega. So you have four outcomes in this uh, elements in this set omega. The power set will have two power four is equal to 16 elements. In other words, you can also define power set P of omega as a set which contains all measurable events that are possible outcomes of this random experiment. At the end of this random experiment, when the experiment is complete, you can clearly verify which of these events have occurred or which of these events have not occurred. This power set P of omega is an example of what we call as a sigma algebra. In general, sigma algebra can be mentioned as a set of all measurable events of a particular random experiment. Sigma algebra need not always contain all possible events. If you are looking for any specific information, then you can define a sigma algebra corresponding to the events for that specific information. For example, if you are looking for information corresponding to the outcome of the first coin toss, then these are the events that you are interested in, right? HH, HT, where the outcome of first coin toss is a head, or TH, TT, sorry, TH, TT, where the outcome of first coin toss is a tail. Now, with these events, you can define a sigma algebra as a phi, which is a null set, omega itself, which is the set of all possible outcomes and the events HHHT, where the first event defines the set where the outcome of first experiment is hit, and the second event THTT, where the outcome of first coin toss is a tail. Now this is a sigma algebra which gives information regarding the outcome of the first coin toss. For any set to be defined as a sigma algebra, it has to satisfy three conditions which intuitively makes sense. One, the null set phi and the set of all outcomes omega should be part of the sigma algebra. Now omega which describes that the outcome of the experiment should lie in at least one of these four should definitely be part of sigma algebra. Two, if an event A is part of sigma algebra, then its complement should also be part of sigma algebra. One thing you can immediately notice here is 
we are saying that if omega is part of sigma algebra, then the null set, which is a complement of omega, should also be part of sigma algebra. Similarly, if your event where the outcome of the first coin toss is a head is a part of sigma algebra, then its complement where the first coin toss is a tail should also be part of sigma algebra. Like we discussed earlier, the sigma algebra which describes the information related to the first coin toss can be defined by the null set omega hh h t and t h t t. The third condition is if a belongs to sigma algebra, if event a belongs to sigma algebra and sorry if event a1 belongs to sigma algebra and event a2 also belongs to sigma algebra then a1 a union a2 should also belong to sigma algebra and the one which we see here also satisfies this condition if hh is a1 belongs to sigma algebra a2 belongs to sigma algebra then the union of these two is nothing but omega which also belongs to sigma algebra just to reiterate sigma algebra is nothing but the set of all measurable events which provide the information that you are looking for when the random experiment is performed and those events which can be verified after the completion of the experiment one thing to note is that the events present in p of omega can only be verified once the random experiment is completed that is once both the coins are tossed and you observe what the outcome is at time t0 you do not have any information on the outcome of the random experiment at that point only probabilities that you can measure correspond to the null set phi or the set omega where in omega you are saying the outcome of the random experiment can be one of the four possible outcomes hh ht th and tt but as the experiment progresses, you gain more information. And as you gain more information, you can probably start measuring the probabilities of more events. For example, at T1, you did you perform the first coin toss and you either notice head or a tail. Now you have information related to what the first coin toss is. Now based on that, there are certain additional events for which you can measure the probability. If the first coin toss is a head, then you can define the events H and HT. Or if the first coin toss is a tail, you can define the events TH and TT for which you can measure the probabilities. That is, as you gained, as you continue performing the experiment, as you gain more information, you have additional events for which you can define the probabilities. The information that you gain at each time period is called as a filtration. And the additional events that you can measure based on the information that you gain, define the sigma algebra at that particular time period for that specific filtration, given the specific filtration. So your sigma algebra at your time T0 would only be consist of phi and omega. But as you gain information at the time t1, you can add additional events to your sigma algebra for which you can define the probability measures. That is at time t1, you exactly know at which event you are in. Because at time t0, you do not have any information. A any of these outcomes are equally likely. But at time t1, you definitely know whether the first coin toss resulted in a head or a tail. Because of which some of the events have become more likely than the others. And you exactly know which events are more likely now. And because you have this additional information. So this is the sigma algebra corresponding to time t1 based on the information that you have available at time t1 which is
Similarly, at time t2, when you completed both the coin tosses, you have information related to the outcomes of both the coin tosses. And at time t2, you can clearly define the probability, you can clearly verify the outcomes which are present in, in the power set P of sigma. Therefore, as you can see, at each time period, as you gather more information, you are adding more events to your uh, sigma algebra. Your sigma algebra at the time t0 is a kind of subset of the sigma algebra at time t1 and the subset of sigma algebra at the time t2. Now the third characteristic that we want to define is the probability measure. Basically, probability measure is nothing but uh, a measure using which you can define the probability of occurrence of all those events that we have discussed earlier in the sigma algebra. Therefore, a probability measure on a sigma algebra f, in, in, in case of a coin toss example, if the coin is a fair coin, then the probability of heads can be defined as half and probability of tail is half. And all those events, the probability of all those events can be measured using the uh, using this probability measure that we have defined here. Hope this gives you some intuitive understanding of what probability space is and what, what the different characteristics of probability space, that is the possible outcomes, the sigma algebra and the probability measure. Thank you.